particle of mass m, initially at the origin, with speed v0, moves horizontally against a resistance proportional to the square of the speed. Express the velocity in terms of the distance travelled. So here we're looking at a mass. Let's get a bit of a diagram going. Some sort of a mass. It's moving initially at the origin with the speed v, okay fine, moves horizontally against a resistance proportional to the square of the speed. So let's define a direction of motion. Let's call this the positive direction of motion. And we know that there is a resistance proportional to the, to the square of the speed. So a resistance would act in, an, in the opposite direction to the motion. So if we're going to the right, the resistance is to the left. And it's equal to, or it's proportional to the square of the speed. So it's equal to some constant times the square of the speed. That should be a v, not an x. k v squared. All right, what else do we have? We have the force of gravity acting down. And whenever we have a particle, which should be on the ground, it has a normal force acting upwards. So I have a normal force, a force of gravity, and a resistive force here. Now it's moving horizontally, it's not moving vertically, so in the vertical direction there's no motion, which means there's no acceleration, which means that there's no force. So the sum of the forces should be equal to zero. So n minus mg is equal to zero. Great, we probably won't uh, use that again, but let's just put it in there for a complete understanding. Now, in the horizontal direction, <clears throat> what do we have? We have kv squared, the force kv squared to the right, to, sorry, to the left, which is opposing the motion, the direction of positive motion. So we have a negative force here, negative kv squared. And now since there is some motion against the resistive force, that should be equal to mass times accelerations, right? So this is just Newton's law here. The sum of forces, in this case there's only one force, the sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. Great, so let's rearrange for b squared, sorry, for, for a. a equals minus k v squared over m. And now here we need to remember that acceleration, there's a special way that we can write acceleration, which we will need in this case. So, should just remember that acceleration <clears throat> can equal dv on dx. So if you haven't seen this before, it's very easy to see this. So a quick proof. Acceleration, well we know that that's the second derivative of displacement, but it's also the first derivative of velocity with respect to time. And then we can use the chain rule, which is dv on dx times dx on dt. So that's by, just by the chain rule. But what's dx on dt? That's the first derivative of displacement with respect to time. We know that that's velocity. So velocity times dv on dx. And we have what we want. All right. So <clears throat> now that we have that, we can set the acceleration here equal to that. So v dv dx is equal to minus k v squared over m. I can cancel 1v with 1v here, I'll get dv on dx equals negative k over m times v. Let's just move that up. Okay, and now I want to be able to have all v's on one side and all x's on one side. So I'm going to flip both sides of this equation. So I'll get dx on dv equals minus m over kv. And now I want to integrate both sides with respect to v. So the integral of dx dv with respect to v should be equal to the integral of minus m over kv with respect to v. Continuing on, integrating dx on dv with respect to v is simply x. And on the right hand side, well minus m on k is simply a constant. 
So I'm integrating 1 over v with respect to v, and we know that that's the natural log of v. And of course, we can't forget our integration constant plus c. Great, so now we have this expression, but we need to find out what our constant c is. So in the question, we were told that the particle initially has a speed v0 at the origin. So that means when t is 0, x is 0, and v equals v0, our speed is v0 initially at the origin. So I can substitute these into this equation here, and I get x is 0 minus m on k log of v0 plus c, and so moving this over to the other side we get, that should be positive, m over k log v0. And so I have that x equals minus m on k log of v plus m on k log of v0. And I can combine these two logs, I can just factor out m on k, or actually I'll factor out minus m on k, and that will give me log of v, whoop, log of v over v0. Okay. Now, we wanted the velocity in terms of the, the distance travelled, which means we want v in terms of x. At the moment, we just have x in terms of v, so let's do a bit of rearranging. So this gives us minus kx on m, just bringing that over, equals log of v on v0. Then if I exponentiate both sides and multiply by v0, I'll be left with v equals v0 e to the negative kx on m. And that is your final answer.